back to Dumb Ants Dawn. I'm Luke, he, him, sometimes they, them, and I'm sorry, single people. I'm off the market. I'm joined by my co-host, who is still in the market, if you are a hot lady looking to date a hot lady. Or if, if, you, if you'll take me, that would be great, too. Hi, I'm Janine. My pronouns are she, they, and... Still available. Wink, wink. <laughs> ah, this is going to be a fun one because I'm a bit sleepy. And I'm a little bit high. <gasps> you know, every time you smoke a bit of weed, baby Jesus dies. And that's fine. I have seen so many baby Jesuses. I'm pretty sure we have enough to spare. Mm hmm. What a friend we have in baby Jesus. If this is your first episode, uh, I guess we had a really good title for this one that uh, pulled you in. Uh, because, yeah, this is going to be a weird one to jump in on. Uh, this podcast that we do, uh, we look at One Piece episodes and then the contemporary Simpsons episodes that came out uh, concurrently to those Japanese One Piece episodes premiering. Specifically, these ones initially ran between February 8th and March 14th of the year 2004. 2004 sure was a year. It was, I believe, in that time I was in my sophomore year in high school. I think I would have been in my freshman year, because I graduated in 2008, so I think that sounds correct. That or like 8th grade. Either way! Not a great time for me in terms of emotional development or, uh, you know, being a teen sucks. I don't recommend doing it more than once. If I'm no. being honest. Yeah, yeah. If you get like an invitation to peer into a magical box that will de-age you or like send you back in time to your teen years, don't, unless you have access to like actively change events in the past or like if you wanted to invest... I mean like I don't think I would even want to do that because like you would like change like an event and then you'll just have to like live things differently through a different set of consequences that you don't know what's going to happen like something equally bad or worse could happen and, yeah, but... and then, like, to go through, like, all of that, like, all, all again to, like, I don't know. I would skip past, like, if, if you could go back and mm -hmm. undo a mistake, pick one that happens after being a teenager. I would go to a different college and like study something different. I think that was that would be the big change and also I think that would be far enough back that you could put like 20 bucks into crypto and have it blow up stupidly and then like pay off your student loans and buy a house and yeah. That's that's my unethical if I went back in time to like Freshman and year that's and that's why you, you then that's and that is why the uh, the speed force hasn't presented itself to you because they know that you would be tempted by crypto. It would be crypto for good, Janine, but also crypto for good. Yeah, like crypto the super dog, not crypto the shitty currency. Crypto that is. the super dog is the only crypto for good. I mean, what about cryptography? Uh... 
What about Crypto, the Crypt Keeper's dog? Crypto, that Star Wars character. Uh, Crypto, my Tronsona. Do you have a Tronsona, Janine? Oh, you were saying Tronsona. Okay. Because uh, without that, that was going to be a different conversation, but sorry, I'm high. Uh huh. And I'm Luke. Welcome <laughs> to Don't Man's Dog. Normally, we talk about One Piece and uh -huh. the contemporary Simpsons episodes that came this out week, at the same time, but this week. We're talking about my. Tr Did you think I said Transona? That was, yes, that was, that I was leaning into. It was going to be a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek, we can nod, and everybody could kind of infer it, but we're going to go ahead and run into it, yes. Submit to me what your transona is. You might say I've read the watch. You might say I've Dominic some Deegan's. No, please, let's not keep talking about... Weird Queer Awakening webcomics from the early 2000s. Let's talk about Simpsons from the early 2000s. Uh, the wow. Simpsons episodes. Yeah, Janine. I'm sorry. I'm a time wizard and I'm blowing your mind right now <laughs> with my chrono abilities. I'll respect chrono better than crypto. No one wants to actually crypto trigger would be a pretty cool sounding game. I'm sure it exists already. Uh so Simpsons uh, new episodes include the Magical History Tour where we get a Henry VIII, a Lewis the Clark, and a Mozart Fitz. Uh like most of them are fine, I think. This is just the continuation of the anthology episodes that we get that will help us to continue to balance out Simpsons in One Piece characters. It's so weird that they made Homer... Henry VIII? Yeah, like, and it, it, the choice is so weird. Why? Because... Because of how it ends, to be honest. Where he gets killed and his daughter takes over the throne? I am sorry that I'm bringing many questions to uh, very high Janine. Listen, there are things that I'm prepared for uh -huh. defending right now. <laughs> My stance that I'm kind of weirded out seeing, like, these Simpsons characters play through bloody events inside of, like, this This feel, it feels closer to a Treehouse of Horror bit than it does one of the Simpsons retelling stories that we've seen before. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's going to be a bit more par for the course because they kind of like being able to kill off characters. For fun? I guess so. I mean, I guess I just didn't feel like I saw stuff like that much in stuff like Simpsons Bible stories, you know? I guess. Uh, but we also had the uh, Simpsons Tall Tales that ended with Bart and Nelson getting killed. That's true. They did have that as kind of a dark reveal. and But that still, at that time, that felt like that was a dark turning point for that kind of genre of Simpsons episode. Mm -hmm. But I do see what you mean, that, that, that this does feel kind of like the natural progression of where these stories can go. Like, they're not being limited to keeping things completely inside of character canon. Or living canon by any means. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, the Mozart one, I think, is definitely the best of the three. 
Definitely. I think it, it has like uh, a stronger legs to stand on in the parodies that it presents. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the core relation, though, like, yeah, the core relationship rings true to the characters in a way that Lenny and Carl as Lewis and Clark doesn't and Henry VIII doesn't because if there's one thing that is true about Homer, he loves his wife. It's been like the number one point for a lot of different Homer centric stories of him either fucking up or. Well, let's be, let's be honest about him fucking up. Mm-hmm. That's like ninety percent of any any sweet thing that he ends up doing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, second one we have here is Millhouse doesn't live here anymore. Where Millhouse moves to Capital City, and so Bart and Lisa become best friends, and we get the Homer begging subplot, which is not great. Uh, yeah, like, it's we, not. We do finally, uh, the most recent new Simpsons episode, as of we're recording this, on a Sunday night while the other episode is uh, airing on TV, uh, did have a good one where uh, Lisa and Marge start a charity to help uh, the unhoused Lisa makes a point of referring to them as unhoused people. And then Marge kind of takes things off the rails because she wants it to be a success rather than continuing to do good and realizes that ultimately the charity that they're having is more of a way to funnel money out of the uh, community and is a net negative for everyone except for her. It's It's an interesting one. That feels like such a relief based on the number of episodes that I've seen inside this series where unhoused people have been the punch down in a lot of jokes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't really realize it until you're watching episode after episode in a binging order when you've seen different themes start to pop up because what you're looking into is also a bit of uh, a timepiece. The Simpsons were always pretty contemporary to the, for the time, even if the writers end up writing for things that they liked growing up. It still was something that was still generic or at least in enough knowledge for just media osmosis. You'd understand some references, at least by the end of the, the bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so finding out what were the attitudes of that time of unhoused people, um, and when you're watching this, uh, B-plot for Homer, you see, like, just, I don't know, like, I feel like I've heard people echo the sentiments that I've seen inside of this episode, and I don't Mm -hmm. want to say it's because you know, the Simpsons influenced people. I just think that that that, that was like the genuine um, attitude of the time. I, I think it is also the unhoused community is not a singular body and there are not easy solutions to every situation because there are As an example of a group, those who have addictions that are being exploited by drug users basically say, all right, you're going to stand on this corner all day long, beg for money. That's how you're going to pay for what we need. And it's like, well, we don't have great addiction treatment in this community. And also we don't like it's it is all a horribly complicated problem. Because typically our government sees it more fit to punish unhoused people as opposed to kind of just saying, hey, this is a failing in our society. We do not look good if we have unhoused people, if we have people who cannot get enough to eat, and we need to fix that first. And instead it's kind of like, oh, you're, you're, you're doing drugs? Well, uh, you don't have money to 
kind of get out of this, so enjoy going to jail where we don't really have the proper... S Sorry, this is turning into a soapbox one. Yeah. It's complicated. There's a bunch of shit, and, uh... We're in this together. Please remember to love and help each other as much as you can. Yes. Um, to be honest, the there is not a lot of sensitivity for unhoused people hmm. uh, in general. But I do know that there are people who um, genuinely tend to side on a particular spectrum of that about helping people mm -hmm. uh, rather than ignoring or thinking of ways to deal with them or push them out of uh, different um, urban areas by banning camping. And mm -hmm. uh, if there's anything that I can be able to say about these episodes here and hearing about where things go is that I hope that that is also echoing and not leading the the sentiment that people are having now of on unhoused people and i i hope that we do see more um not there, just in media but it with people that we see every day mm -hmm. sense sen sensitivity for the unhoused i agree uh i think there are a lot of things that you can do uh uh, as like individuals to see if oh there are local initiatives i know the church where my mom is a pastor is actively being like hey our attendance is down we have a big parking lot we are going to put in temporary uh long-term housing structures so that it is going to be a safe place for these people to live so they can start to get back on their feet have a stable enough place to find work and get the other support that they need to get more control in their lives. And so, yeah, I, I respect my mom's church for doing that. Uh, yeah, we're... Very weird energy tonight. I was kind of like, oh, weird. this would be a quick one, but... <laughs> to talk about the other part of the episode of Millhouse Doesn't Live Here Anymore, mm -hmm. uh, this particular episode, at least the A plot, the Bart and Lisa plot, mm -hmm. uh, that really did grip onto me because um, recently um, I started getting in contact with my family a lot more because... Um, I had some time away from them uh, after I came out as trans mm -hmm. uh, so I could be able to kind of develop myself away from them and their expectations. Um, I, I just needed to be my own person for a while before I debuted back with the family. And mm -hmm. now as I'm getting to know my sister more, um, and becoming like a better friend with my sister, I feel like a lot of the different story beats about kind of like where this, where we see this story kind of evolve. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that it was very surprising to see something uh, this sweet juxtaposed to the B plot with it it's it's kind of a joke that you kind of like get like oh this is like a really sweet story here but if you want to watch the episode you, you gotta deal with all of this yeah like I think when uh the real gems talked about this one it was kind of like hey yeah you're you're here for the Barton Lisa story because I mean I, I think the way that your relationship, hopefully, with siblings can develop is important in kind of seeing that it's like, oh, the treatment that we've had through our parents has been different. Like, I've gotten to understand my brother more leading up to my wedding, and it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, no, i not a fan of my parents doing that. So, but, uh, yeah. We also have Smart and Smarter, which took me 
I think until I watched the episode, be like, oh, the title's a play on Dumb and Dumber. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where Lisa is worried that Maggie is smarter than she is, tries some alternative identities, and then runs away. And uh, turns out that Maggie isn't necessarily smarter than Lisa. Lisa was just signaling everything to Maggie. Uh, we get some really solid bits in it. Uh, is it? Yes, this is the one where Homer punches out Simon Cowell. Yes. Which they actually did get Simon Cowell to get to voice himself getting punched mm -hmm. out, which honestly, a uh, fucking bravo for him mm -hmm. for signing up and just being like, okay, I know that I'm just going to be like the asshole and like people are going to hate me and my character is going to get punched and I'm going to react to getting punched. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, this is where we get Goth Lisa, a.k.a. Ravencrow Never Smiles. Where uh, which is currently right now my fucking <laughs> profile picture on Twitter. I don't know when I'm going to change it, but it's probably going to stay that way when this episode comes on because it's honestly kind of a look. Like, mm -hmm. what if I fucking recreated that outfit for Halloween. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is your choice for uh, Lisa's various personas? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like the joke was that, you know, she was just awkward and clumsy in all of them, but... Mm -hmm. Wow. No, I don't think I liked particularly any of them, but it's... As a person who went through several different awkward stages in high school, I, I'm definitely, like, just kind of had a weird cringe reaction from basically every single one. Yeah, yeah. I think there is a very natural desire to try and fit in in various personas... At least at some point in your life, and then you kind of just settle into, oh, no, this is who I am, and I can't really change that. If I find any old goth um, photos of myself, I'll definitely post them up. I mean, the I've pretty much been nerd or nerd adjacent my entire life, so. Except yes. for the time that people thought I was a stoner. You seem like the person in high school that was wearing the khaki cargo shorts and the Legend of Zelda green shirt with the Triforce on it. I was told green was not my cover. Was I, I was told green was not my color. And so I was oh, not allowed to get that. That was the only thing that was keeping you from completely yeah, fitting yeah. the bill. I mean, also, jeans that were out of style occasionally on fridays i would wear a blazer a uh, sports coat that i got for my brother because my shoulders are, are better than his it fit me better um yeah uh there was a while in my junior and senior year when i was in votech where i just had very big jim morrison hair and i uh, went to Bonnaroo and I had multiple people asking me if I was holding. I Damn. was not. I was very disappointing to them. <laughs> but you're, you, you clearly got the look on you, man. Mm -hmm. I bet he's lying. I bet he's holding and he's not going to share. Yeah, I had my bag searched for the first time ever and it was like, oh... I, I guess I do kind of look like a stoner man. Damn. Mm-hmm. Hey, congrats on the first time for being profiled for something. I mean, when I was a child, I was profiled in the newspaper for being a smart white boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they were uh. two-thirds right. You're more of a smart white ass. 
Uh, and then last was the Ziff who came to dinner, where Artie Ziff is hiding from the feds in the Simpsons' house. Homer wins his company at the card game, and then goes to jail until Artie finally does the right thing. Which, I haven't seen this episode yet. No spoilers. I just spoiled the entire thing. You. Oh my god, you're lucky. You're so you're so lucky I'm high. I'm not going to listen to this episode until I've already seen it and I'm not going to remember what you said 20 minutes from now. Uh, your new characters unlocked include Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Yugi Moto, Tweedledee, Hell yeah. Uh, Lancelot Link and Philippa Wickerbottom. Uh, do you know about Lancelot Link, Janine? Lancelot Link. I feel when you, once you explain it to me, I'm going to either find out that there would be no way that I would ever uh-huh. know such a uh-huh. thing, or I didn't know such a thing was had a name. Lancelot Link was a black and white TV show where they dressed up a bunch of chimpanzees and then dubbed in their lines to make a detective show. Oh my god. And would you like to hear the least surprising thing, Janine? Sure. It was also super racist. Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh man uh, one of the times I came over to Devin's house because he had rented the show and Devin is a person who will have like seen every Academy Award film and have like opinions on which ones have the best cinematography and stuff Devin is also a man who has seen and is a fan of all of the live action Alvin the Chipmunks movies and so to say that he enjoyed the show, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at F-R-E-D-D-O-F-E-T-T. He did not sign up for this. But yeah, Lancelot, Link, Detective, Chimp. They really made a bunch of racist stuff. Uh, but yeah. That's that's kind of The Simpsons. There's a bunch of stuff we get a few uh, accesses to other uh, characters. And uh, let's get into those One Piece episodes that we're going to be covering. Episodes 180 through 186, which includes Battle in the Ancient Ruins, God Enel's Desire. Ambitions of Fairy Ver, the Ark. Maxim! Finally clashing! Pirate Luffy versus God Enel. Maxim rises! The start of Death Pia. <laughs> Luffy's fall, God's judgment, and Nami's desire. Two people awaken! A rescue in front of burning love, yes! And Capriccio to destruction, the impending doom of Sky Island. You know, Janine, I don't practice death, Pia. Damn. I don't get it. (laughs) But I feel so simple. That's going to make me feel even dumb if you explain it. Hey, what happened on them episodes of One Piece? (laughs) So in the ruins in the upper yard, Robin, Zoro, Viper, and Gonfall are standing off against Enel while Nami is hiding at me. And Enel is planning to leave for the Endless of Earth, where he says the ground is forever. And before he goes, he plans to destroy Skypea because it's profane. People shouldn't be up in the clouds. Land shouldn't be up in the clouds. It should be down in the ocean. And, you know, I was like, yeah, and you know, Gonfall had 600 of those uh, divine warriors. 
I forced them to work on a big project and killed them all this morning. Except for Moyle, who escaped, but then was killed. So technically he did. And this this shit right here. This mm -hmm. shit. Like I've never seen, I don't know, or maybe I wasn't paying attention, but, like, mm -hmm. I never knew somebody to have, like, an almost set body count coming into the scene, you know? Mm -hmm. 650, like, that's, like, because, like, you know specifically what it is, it's such a real number, you can be able to fathom 650... Of just those guys with wings, just like just moving around, just regular people, not like the people that are like were mean assholes getting killed all the time. People that just like were just too afraid and just went along with things, and they got I the mean, drop on them. I mean, the divine warriors are more of, hey, we're loyal to Gonfall, but also we will now get killed if we don't do this work. And Gonfall charges to attack because he had wanted to make peace with the Shandorians before Enel took him down. And Enel just smacks him down and is like, all right, anyone else want to join me? And they're all like, fuck no. Which is fair. And Robin's like, well, what about that golden bell? And Enel's like, well, I'm pretty sure I know where it is. But then he knocks her out. And we kind of see that everybody is outmatched here because Zoro and Wiper attack, but their attacks do nothing. And Nami's kind of like, oh yeah, because he's made of lightning. And so Wiper runs up with a Sea Prism Stone and the Reject Dial, and he actually like almost kills Enel. He just doesn't finish the job because the Reject Dial like, fucks him up so much. And so Enel resurrects his own heart Knocks it's the out. most bullshit thing ever. Oh yeah, it is the uh, the GM didn't expect you to roll that well, so we can't let the battle end here. I I hate it so much, but it's also like that same level of fucking like cheesy anime bullshit that like you know it was just like ah oh, my god they're putting him over. That's what it is. It's 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 pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. One Piece is just pro wrestling. Yep. And uh, Zoro is like, all right, well, I can try this. And then Zoro gets knocked out. And so Enel has known Nami is there the whole time. And she's kind of like, all right, I'll go along and follows on the waiver that she has. And so Enel takes her to the Ark Maxim, which is a massive flying ship made of gold that he had the <laughs> Divine Warriors build. Janine, you weren't expecting an Austin Powers in gold member, were you? I wasn't. I expected better of you so that when it happened, it caught me <laughs> off guard and it was funny. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So how do you feel about the uh, Arc Maxim reveal? I feel like it... I don't know. Like, it's it's obviously another bullshit reveal that's going to lead to another bullshit reveal. I feel like I felt like when um, Crocodile's real plan was revealed, I was just like, mm -hmm. oh, that's like a completely different side. I didn't even fucking think about dog. Okay. <laughs> Uh, here's a question that you probably haven't considered. What do you think the Endless of Earth is? That's the thing. I don't fucking know. I'm From what I'm expecting right now, uh -huh. um, it is the um, Dreaming Realm in which you can be able to um, have all possibility uh, just get created and once in there you can be able to with enough thought with enough dream uh 
recreate basically the entire place. Also, That's... I mm -hmm. think that it is black tie only. Uh, we're like two episodes of our show away from two or three from our show of uh, finding out what it is. Uh, I don't believe the anime fully gets into what happens with Enel's uh, stuff. But uh, it's it's going to be a what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck moment for you, Gene. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so meanwhile, Luffy, Pierre, and Isa escape from Nola's body after a bit of body horror. <laughs> Where it's like, uh, I understand this is cartoon rules, but please do not get into the giant snake's eyes that way. Yeah, it's a little gross. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they see the destruction that Enel caused, and Robin tells Luffy that Nami left with Enel and warns that Enel is going after the Golden Bell before he is going to destroy Skypea. And uh, Konis, meanwhile, uh, is heading back towards Angel Beach. The White Berets try to stop her, and, like, Konis is getting her redemption arc here. And we see that, like, Enel sees that she is returning and just doesn't care. And so she's like, all right, you all need to listen to me. Otherwise, I may have to kill you because Enel is going to kill all of us if we don't get out of here. And the people aren't listening to her. So she's like, Enel isn't God. And Enel doesn't kill her and the people realize that oh they are really fucked and have to like start rushing out and the families of the divine squad are like what happened to our family members and she's like debating whether she can tell them they're dead or not and that is when mckinley comes in and he's like no you need to get out of here first we can deal with them later and he's just like yeah I feel awful because I was maintaining these laws to prevent other people from being killed by Enel, and everything that we've done has been utterly pointless. A cab! Yeah, sometimes you're a cop and you figure out the bastard's been you all along. Mm hmm. And that the people in charge would just as soon snap a finger and get rid of you in a heartbeat. Uh, do you want me to drop a beat for you there? Oh, shit. I gotta tell you about something else I just remembered right now. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Talk, just saying that. Mm -hmm. Just I have a collectible trading card of Carl Winslow mm -hmm. from Family Matters. Mm -hmm. Sorry, talking about cops just made me think about um, Reginald Bell Johnson. He shot a kid. And I shot a kid. Yeah. It didn't age well, except that he actually feels regret over it and suffered consequences for it. Right, something that doesn't naturally happen that we've seen. Mm -hmm. Did you ever listen to the Die Hard 2020 uh, podcast or 2021 podcast that I did? I haven't. Oh, yeah. I did a uh, remake of Die Hard set during the pandemic. Well, everybody else who's listening to this right now is definitely going to want to listen to that. Uh, you can go to multiversalq.com and find it there. Yeah. Speaking of trading cards, I'm looking and seeing the unplayed box of One Piece trading cards that I have. For Christmas, I bought the four starter sets that they had and gave three of them out to friends and never actually got to play the game. I held on to box number two for the worst generation. God, you're going to be so jazzed when we get there, Janine. 
I imagine so. That every every episode of this bullshit anime is a gift to itself. Uh, speaking of the bullshit anime, I am getting more excited for the live action show. Uh, because apparently Oda had final say on whether or not the episodes would get released or not. And like final approval on pretty much everything. So like that level of hands on, it's kind of like, I will at least be fascinated to see how it goes. I mean, if this is the 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 best effort that even Oda is putting into it, mm-hmm. I definitely want to see it succeed on the merit of the people working on it. Yeah, uh, more than the i than you know the exact adaptation that people might be expecting for. I mean, I feel like mm-hmm. that when you see something inside of a quicker medium that you have to be a little bit more comfortable with sometimes how the story is presented in a different pacing or um, if certain elements are squished together for constraint of time. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Luffy, Isa, and Pierre... Oh, uh, Konus, uh, after... Talking to McKinley, heads back to prepare the ship for the Straw Hats. Uh, meanwhile, Luffy, Isa, and Pierre start heading towards the Ark Maxim, thanks to Isa's Mantora. And Eno realizes that he was wrong about there being five survivors left as Luffy arrives at the ship and asks, What makes Eno a god for coming on board? And Eno, like, shoots a blast into Luffy, and it has no effect. He thinks that Luffy dodged it. And then he realizes that Luffy is made of rubber, and he's immune to Enel's lightning attacks, and it is so good. I I thought about it. I uh, thought uh, about uh, it. I was <laughs> I was like, is he resistant because he's a rubber man? Mm-hmm. Because that's the thing. You you get this idea of like his power is that he's stretchy. Like no, his power is that he's a rubber man. Mm-hmm. He's a rubber person. It's mm-hmm. he carries. He doesn't carry the property of rubber. He is rubber. So because he's rubber, he would be resistant to. Electricity, which is so bullshit. <laughs> but in its own bullshit way, in its own one piece way. It totally th- makes it's, sense. The the math is sound. Uh-huh. We looked it up. That's how it all works. And Enel's reaction is just great. Yeah, because like they they they, they touch up on it. He's been living in the sky this whole time. He doesn't know what rubber is mm-hmm. at all. So mm-hmm. to be like this person is made out of a material you don't know that you could not affect. Mm-hmm. Who the hell is rubber? That's my fucky Winter Soldier impression. Uh, so email... Uh, using the knowledge of damage resistance from the D&D 3rd edition manual, is kind of like, okay, well, if I attack you with bludgeoning attacks, I won't do damage. So he transforms his golden staff into a blade, because you can cut Luffy, and Enel is also able to move through gold, and is able to use Mantra to avoid Luffy's attacks, and so, like, Eno swings Luffy through the ship and is like, all right, I defeated him. Let's start going. Starts up the engines. And Luffy is just like, all right, I see how this is, and gives his hat to Nami, because that's when you know shit's going to go down. 
and uh, the Ark Maxim starts to fly as they're evacuating Angel Island. And some of the Scythians are also like, hey, McKinley, we should probably warn the Shandorians because uh, let's not be complicit in another worse genocide. Which is better, I guess. Yeah, it's... Next episode, we're we're getting more context. And uh, it'll be an interesting discussion. Yeah, it's good that they weren't just like, oh, let, let's let them die. Uh, Enel starts activating Death Pia, which is a massive thundercloud that Enel will use to destroy all of the Sky Islands. And Luffy, genius hat on, tries to figure out how he can defeat Enel without his moves being predicted. And tries moving unconsciously, which works, but he's unable to attack. And then he starts trying other stuff until he realizes that if he bounces his fists off of the ship, the random recoil will hit Enel. And enough of those attacks hit that he's able to then follow up with a gum gum rifle, knocking Enel back as the ship begins to rise. And Luffy is unable to stop the ship. And then Enel tricks Luffy into getting his arm stuck in a massive ball of gold. <laughs> you son of a bitch. And Luffy just gets tossed over the edge of the ship. Ice and Pierre try and catch him, but Enel strikes them with a massive thunder blast. Back kind of going merry. Sanji and Usopp wake up, and Sanji's horny senses tingling because he knows Nami is back in a bikini top. And decides that he and Usopp need to go and save her. That's what it sounds like. Uh huh. Uh, so Enel starts heading up towards where he believes the bell is and demands that Nami forget her friends, but she refuses to give up on her friends. Good for Nami. Konus, meanwhile, returns to the Going Merry, and Sue has to explain through pantomime what happened to Sanji and Usopp, who jumped up onto the Ark Maxim. And back in the ruins, Robin is working to help the other survivors of Enel's attack get back together. The Shandorian chief, meanwhile, is evacuating the Shandorian village, and he hopes that Wiper is going to be able to move forward. From what? Who knows? And, uh... Pierre protected Isa from the Thunder Blast, and so in the rubble, Isa finds Luffy. And we kind of get to the big climax where Eno decides he can no longer trust Nami, tries to kill her. Nami is able to hold him off a bit with the climb attack, but then when he moves to blast her, Usopp appears to distract Eno because he thought Sanji was up there with him. And then Usopp just has to go in the defensive mode. He tries to use his psychic attacks to disturb Enel, but Nami ends up getting more distracted. Nami is able to jump off the ship with the waiver and tries to help Usopp get on as well. Usopp gets electrocuted again instead. Luckily, Sanji appears, kicks Usopp onto the waiver so they can get onto the beanstalk giant jack. And Sanji takes one more blast from Enel but reveals that he completed his mission of fucking with the engines of the Ark Maxim, which begins to sink. Hell yeah, Janine. It's Hell such yeah. a badass moment of just, like, just having that guy just about to kill you, just, like, stop, just like, what the fuck did you do, man? Uh-huh. Oh. One Piece. Oh, it's so good. Uh-huh. And now we have one character to match. Shani, are you ready? Sure. I am so excited because I have two suggestions. Uh, the one character we have to match this week is Mochi, who is Moyle's son. And uh, my Rodrigo style is the Animal Sounds Kid. Uh, from Smart and Smarter, who Simon Cowell judges him. Ah, oh, that one. Uh, but uh, do you remember who Armoyle was, Janine? Who is Armoyle? 
uh, Dexter Scully, McBain's partner. Right. So I decided to look into the deep inner energy at the Earth's core to try and figure out the ultimate pick. And I think I've got it, but let's go through uh, yours and the fan suggestions before I reveal my galaxy-brained idea. All right. Well, the uh, I double-checked. I don't know if we used him or not, but uh, my number one pick is uh, Billy from... Oh, uh, the vegetarian episode. Yes. Uh, In yes, the kitchen I... with DNA, was it? Um... Someone's in the kitchen with the DNA. Oh, no. That was Jimmy. Mm -hmm. That was in Lisa the Vegetarian. And... Um. Yeah. Uh, someone's in the kitchen with the DNA is a different one. Uh, that cow would eat you. Yeah. Don't kid yourself, Jimmy. If a cow ever got a chance, he'd eat you. That's a Jimmy. So, did you want, mm, that's good, Billy? You know what? I don't see why I can't submit both names. Uh, there's also, uh, you gotta do it for me, Billy McGarnagle. Because I don't think someone's in the kitchen with the DNA we actually see, Billy? Well, if, uh... If we gotta get a Billy from somewhere, we'll get a Billy from somewhere. But also, on my other choice, Jimmy. Uh huh. From the cows. All right. So we've got Billy from McGarnagal and Jimmy. And, oh, what's this? Pere, 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 pere. We've got suggestions from our fans. Uh, the first is from King Atticus, who suggested Dr. Hibbert's second daughter. And that one welder guy suggested Wendell. But, uh, Janine, are you ready for my genius idea? All right, let's hear it. We do the second SCOE. Scoey from the uh, McBain talk show. Because, you know, sometimes parents and kids have resemblance. I think it would be hilarious if this small child also looked like his father who died. It would be a great way of honoring his father who died. I can tell you right now that there's going to be... <laughs> A bit of a difference, but not <laughs> one that I... Huh. I mean, it's not completely out of the question, either. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to agree to it, because it is... Because I got married and it's technically a wedding gift. Sure. Let's call that the wedding <laughs> gift. The tale of two Scoeys. <laughs> Scoey, do you think your dad, Scoey, is ever going to come back from the Divine Warriors? Beautiful. <clears throat> Just remembered how stupidly sad that kid's entire existence was. <laughs> Fucking, Thank like, you. having trouble making friends because he doesn't have a dad. Because his dad is over there, and all the other kids feel bad for him. Mm hmm. But I mean, McBain says that Scoey's. Sure, it makes him look like a homosexual, and the audience does not like that, so it's the same.
Janine, where can yes. people find you online? You can find me back on Twitter, baby. I am at Janine Juliet. That is J A N I N E J U R L I E T. If I made mouth sounds that sounded like letters that there weren't, um, you'll prob I'll probably pop up while you're typing everything in there. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at Janine is dope. I post selfies there sometimes, and you can also find me on various Luke Hair Broadcast Productions. Luke, what are you gonna tell them about now? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Coltreg. That's K O L T R E G. Uh, also, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I am at Q S A N D T A N C I R S. That's Q's and Tancers, which is a very, very deep reference because my initial Instagram got locked out and Facebook will not let me back. Sorry, Meta will not let me back in. So. If you want to just see me mostly posting Pokemon Go photos, uh, you can follow me there. You can also go to my website, uh, LukeHair.com. And uh, yeah, I've been on a podcast hiatus because I was getting into marriage mode. But Janine, guess what? What, what? I've been married, and so now my brain is uh, working on new podcast ideas, so... Uh, get your rears in gear for what you're going to hear. And please don't fear Paul Revere. Mike, our artist who does the wonderful cover art, uh, can be found at Patent Pending on the Instagram. That's P-A-T-T-E-N-P-E-N-D-I-N-G. Give him a follow. Hire him to do some illustrations for you. His prices are reasonable. And you, if you're listening to this, you have seen his work, so. You have looked upon his works, ye mighty, now despair, until you hire him to draw some illustrations for you. You've been looking at some art by him for free, and honestly, um, that we kind of feel like that's freeloading. So, I mean, that's, if you that's could just fine. like stop and just like maybe give some money, so you're like not like a complete moocher for like the greatness that you know, genuinely, um, like he carves from a tablet the marble that's been there the whole time, the the mashup that even is deeper that we didn't see when creating some of these art pieces. Janine? Bart work. Janine, capitalism is a virus, but giving each other some money is our way of vaccinating. I may have got, like, a very mean right there, but, like, everybody knows that was for, like, a bit, right? Still, um, pay Mike Patton. Yes. Pay Mike Patton. Pay, pay Mike, Mike Patton. Patton. Pay Wait. Mike Patton. Uh, yeah, you can find Domance Dawn at Domance Dawn. Like... What? Nothing. Uh, yeah, you can find the show at Domance Dawn on Twitter, uh, or, or, sorry, shit. At domancedawn.com or domance on Twitter, or there's a Facebook page, but I'm bad at uh, updating that. I don't want to have to update more social media. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, please leave a review. Please tell your friends. Please, like, bring the show up in weird conversations with other Simpsons fans that you know, and uh, also One Piece fans, I guess. Uh, that, that definitely One gonna... Piece fans first. I mean, like, if there's anyone who enjoys different One Piece art, it's going to be mm -hmm. people who watched One Piece. Yeah, somehow the show with uh, 
over a thousand episodes, uh, it's easier to get them into other shows than some substance fans giving them into One Piece. Um, but yeah, next time, Janine, guess what? What? We're going to just watch like three episodes and get a bunch of back history context. Oh, well, damn. For our 30th episode. Hey. So until then, smooth sailing and thank you for listening. Remember when we thought this was going to be a short episode. Oh.